Hi, in this lecture, you will learn how to create and use the stored procedures. But first, let's distinguish the stored procedures from the others. We know that the stored procedures are one of the subprogram types. They are stored in the database, I mean inside a schema. So anyone who have the right privilege will be able to run that code. So if you do the same things again and again, you create a procedure for that, store it into a schema, and then call it with its name whenever you need. I will not explain all the differences one by one now, but for the functions, I can say that procedures does not return any value, but functions must return a value. So you cannot write a procedure inside of a select statement, for example, but you can do that for the functions. We will see that. So let's see how we create the procedures first. Then you will see these properties and differences on the examples. Actually, the usage is pretty similar with the anonymous blocks except for the declaration area. Different from the anonymous blocks, we delete the declare keyword and write our procedure declaration. To do that, we first start with the create keyword. It shows that we will create something. Then we can write or replace keywords. We write that if we want to modify an existing procedure. If we are creating right now, we don't need to write that. But we can write, it will be accepted anyway. Alright, then we write what we will create. It is procedure here. Then we write our name for that specific procedure. With this name, we will be able to run that procedure. If our procedure has any parameters, we can write them by separating with comma signs. But here is the difference. We need to specify if this parameter will be into this procedure or out of this procedure. I mean, will you send any value to this procedure or will you get some value from that procedure or both? We will see that in further lessons. Let's pass it for now. Then we write the type of our parameter, means which type of parameter will be used here. And then we write our is or as keywords. One of them will be accepted. It's up to you. Actually, in here, we need to write create, procedure, procedure name, and is or as keywords. These are mandatory. The rest of them are optional. After writing these, we can declare our variables, cursors, etc. Then we write our begin end block and exception section if we wish. Just like the anonymous blocks. The only difference is writing procedure declaration instead of writing declare keyword. There is no declare keyword here. Once we create that procedure, we can call it with its name and with the parameters if it has any parameter. Alright, now let's open up the SQL developer and see how we use that on examples. Now, this is our previous example. This code increases the salaries of all the employees and we need to do that operation for every year. So I can turn this into a procedure and use when I need it. Let's see then. I simply delete the declare keyword and write create procedure increase salaries for example. As. Now, since we will just create this procedure, I write only the create keyword then the procedure keyword and the name. For the last, I write as or is keyword. I preferred as in here. Great, since I don't want to pass any parameter into this procedure, I didn't write any parentheses. See that? Pretty simple. Now let's create it. As we can see, procedure increased salary is compiled. We see a new word compiled. I said that when you run an anonymous block, it is compiled first. What does compile mean then? Your code is checked if there are any typos or invalid usages, etc. If it seems all correct, this human readable code is converted into a machine code. This is called as compilation. So now we compiled and saved the compiled machine code into our database. Now there is no need to compile when we want to use that procedure. If we don't change anything, it won't be compiled anymore. It will be executed from the compiled code. Now let me show you something. Like we can see the tables from the connections tab here, we can also see the procedures too. 
if you don't see your procedure here, just right click the procedures branch here and select refresh. If you still cannot see that, you may have created this procedure in another schema. We have created our procedure in HR schema and we did not specify any other schema name before it, so it is created in the HR schema. We cannot find that procedure inside of another user. Actually, this rule is true for all the objects. Every object in Oracle database is bound to a schema. So it must be in a schema and the others can see or run that only if they have the right privilege. All right, now we see that we saved our procedure into our database. Now let's double click on the procedure name here. Notice that a quite different tab is open for us. As you can see above, the control panel of the worksheet is completely different. No comment, rollback, etc. Here we have some different icons, a gear icon and a debug icon. We will see this debug icon later, but let's focus on the gear icon now. When we create our procedure or function, we have the chance to modify it later. We can either modify it from a basic worksheet, just like we created before, or we can modify it with this worksheet. We reach this worksheet with clicking on the name of our procedure in the connections tab. Besides, we have some more changes here. We created our procedure with writing create procedure keyword, but in here it writes create or replace procedure. That means we need to write or replace keyword to be able to modify our procedure. Before modifying our code, let's see something more. For example, we can create a procedure with using the SQL developer connections tab. How? We simply right click on the procedure branch and select the new procedure here. In that new window, we can specify our procedure name or add new parameters with clicking on this green icon here and change the mod, data type, etc. of this parameter. When you click OK, you will see that a new procedure is created but with a null begin end block. Now you can delete the null keyword and write what you want about your job. When we run the compile or gear icon here, you will be compiled and save that procedure. Let's do that. As we can see, we successfully compiled our new procedure. We can easily drop it with using same UI. I'm right clicking on the name of my new procedure and click on the drop button and click on apply. You can use SQL developer in many areas like that. You can check and try. Great. Now I think it is enough to show how to create the procedure. Now let's use it. Now let's open up a new worksheet and call our procedure. We have two ways to call our procedure. The first one is calling it inside of a begin end block and the second one is calling it with the execute command. Let's start with the second one. I simply write execute and the name of my procedure. Execute and increase salaries. Now let's run it. See that? Pretty simple. If I want to run a procedure alone, I use execute command. Now notice that we executed many lines of code with calling only its name. Now let's see the second way, because most of the times we use the procedures within our code. We simply write begin end block for it, and now let's do that. Begin and end. And between them, let's write something more first, dbms output dot put line let's say increasing the salaries and under that I write increase salaries and let me copy the BMS output dot put line again and paste in here and write all the salaries are successfully increasing. As you can see, pretty simple. We just write our procedure name. No execute command this time. Besides, 
we can write only our procedure or we can write many lines of code inside of this beginning end block. It's up to you. Now let's run our code. As we can see, we could run more than 10 lines of code with just calling its name. We can call its name for many times. No need to write 10 lines of code for each time. We will just write its name. Let's do that. I simply copy that and paste for more time. Now let's run it. See that we increased the salaries for four times with four lines. Our procedure can have thousand lines of code, no problem. Only the name will be enough to run that. With this way, we did our job easier and with much more beautiful way. Now, let's create a different procedure and use that inside of our blocks. We know that dbmsoutput.putLine name is a long text to write something on the screen. Assume that we want to separate the increases by some dashes. No need to write all these texts. We can simplify that with using a procedure. So let's simplify that. Now let's open up a new worksheet and create our procedure for that. I write create procedure new line as and begin and end keywords and between them I write my dbms output dot put line let me copy that and some dashes now let's create it procedure new line compile and let's use that as a separator in our block. Now let's open up our previous example. But before that, let me copy that name. And call our new procedure after each call of increased salaries procedure. As we can see, there is so less code here but doing many things. Now let's roll back and run it. As we can see, pretty simple. We can use procedures with only their names and anywhere we want. Now let me show you how to modify the procedures. We know that we can modify it within a basic worksheet or with a worksheet that SQL developer provides for us. It's here. Assume that we will write a message that shows that the procedure finished executing. So let me copy the dbms output again. Let me write procedure finished executing. Now, before compiling that, I need to explain you something. Compiling that code is considered as a DDL operation. All the changes will be committed automatically when you do any compile. So be sure that you roll back all the changes before you compile your procedure. So let's roll back it first. Now let's compile our code. Great. We can do that with copying that code and run it in another worksheet. The important thing in here is we need to write the or replace keyword because we know that create or replace means that if this procedure is not yet created, create it. If it is already created, replace it with that code. If we don't write or replace keyword, we will have an error. Great. Now let's run our block and see if we could do that. As can be understood from here, changing from only one place will be enough to affect all the users that use that procedure. Great, now let me show you something more. But first, let's roll back again. Now, let's open up our procedure pack. We know that when we compile, if we see compiled in the script output or messages window, that means we compiled our code. No problem here. But what if we do something wrong? Let me show you. Now let's delete the semicolon for example and try to compile again. 
As we can see, a new tab here shows that we did an error. It describes our error. We can check from there and find out the problem. But in the messages tab, we see that it is compiled but with some errors. So the problem starts right here because we compiled our procedures with some errors. So no one will be able to run that procedure until we compile that without errors. Now let's try to run that procedure again. As we can see from the script output, we got an error. It says the object hr.increase salaries is invalid. Yes, it's invalid because we compiled that with an error. Actually, it can be invalid by some other reasons too, but for now we need to know that if it is compiled with any errors, its status returns to invalid and that procedure cannot be executed until we correct that. Now let's turn back and correct that. Now we corrected that wrong part. Is it enough? No, because this code is in only our computer. We need to compile it to store the last status into our database. So let's do that. Perfect. It is compiled without any errors. Now we can run that in anywhere. Great. Now we know how to create, modify, and use a procedure in BASIC. We will see more details in our next lectures. So this is the end of this lecture, see you in the next one.